I'm with Guillermo. He's just like a permanent <laughs> guest in this channel. It should be called Hey Pilar and Guillermo. <laughs> <laughs> But he's here with me because we're going to do a chatty video, the first on the channel. Some of you guys have asked us, well, have asked me to talk about my university experience in London. And I thought I'd bring Guillermo because obviously he's, he's also from Spain and he's come to London to study, but our experiences are mm. a bit different. So the biggest difference between our uni experience is that I went to like an arts university and I went to like an academic, more, yeah, more prestigious university. But that's not to say that other universities are less prestigious or yeah. worse. I went to Goldsmiths University. It's an arts uni mostly. It, it also has like subjects like literature and politics and stuff. Mm. But like the biggest, what it's known for, it's like arts university. Mm. I studied media and communications and in the UK, Goldsmiths University was like advertised as like the best or one of the best for media mm -hmm. and communication, so that's why I chose it. And I went to King's College London and I studied English Lit for my undergrad and then I'm currently studying a master's in uh, geography, like social, si social geography. London is amazing. I feel like mm -hmm. you can't compare any kind of like university experience elsewhere in the UK with London. Mm -hmm. Even like the way people go out and everything mm -hmm. is so different in London. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, we're gonna del dive more into that. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's basically our like little introduction. No, London is very expensive, mm -hmm. like very expensive, rent, transportation, everything. Mm -hmm. So when I first thought about moving, obviously my first idea, my first choice was moving into like student, like uni provided student accommodation, because mm -hmm. that's the cheapest option to be honest, because of course we didn't know anyone in London that we could like share a flat with or anything and it's also like the culture in UK university like first year you just go into halls because you won't know most people and like you try to put yourself out there and like try yeah. to make friends within yeah I feel like halls culture is mm. like really big in England yeah. and to be honest if you're a bit like me for me like home has to be like a very like safe relaxed place so mm. when i moved into my halls fun fact i only lasted two days <laughs> <laughs> but like we had like extremely different experiences in yeah. like first halls because the vibe is a bit different i think mm. yours is provided by your uni but it's oh, so, rented by a person yeah company. so the actual halls is like managed by a private company but technically like kings just like fully funds it so yeah, yeah. Yeah, whereas like my halls was just like no, there's really like no control there. Mm. And later on, I found out that like my halls where I was originally meant to live in mm. was kind of known as like the crazy party mm. halls in <laughs> Goldsmiths, which I do love like a party or two, mm. but I'm definitely not that kind of person. My halls was crazy on the first night. A lot of people doing drugs. I try. I was trying to sleep, but I just kept hearing like people having sex. Yeah. It was all very overwhelming. Crazy. Yeah. And yeah, it's fun, but that place couldn't be my home. Mm. I would never feel secure there. Mm. So literally, after two days, I was like, I had a panic attack. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's normal to be it honest. It is normal. It's and very. I mean, it is. It is the whole like experience of the halls also mounted on top of the whole moving into a different country and everything. very overwhelming and it was super overwhelming and like yeah so thankfully like it's quite normal for people to drop out of their homes yeah. on their first week so my host didn't have any kind of problem with that mm. they were like it's fine you won't get your deposit back but we can break the contract which was and the perfect. deposit was small yeah like compared to, 200 yeah. pounds or something so after that i looked into like the private halls recommended by my uni mm. which is how i found my accommodation it was very expensive so for an en suite is that how you say it en suite en suite, en suite. for an en suite <laughs> it was like like around 240 a week mm. and sharing the kitchen and everything and in my halls they didn't provide any kind of like cleaning or, or anything catering, like that nothing. catering nothing it was just like the room by itself yeah. 
and laundry was very expensive yeah laundry, laundry was yeah laundry is really expensive when you're in hole so a lot of hand washing my host experience is sort of very different to hers um so so basically i applied through like kings and they gave me an offer to this host and it was like i think it was like 254 a week which is expensive the difference was that um my location was like pretty close to uni like 20 minutes walking so i kind of talked to my my parents whatever and we came to the conclusion that i wouldn't be taking any type of transport and in and that money that would have gone to transport would go into rent but yeah my my whole experience was like the complete opposite like the people in my flat would not talk to each other we would see each other in the kitchen we would say hi and that's it it was very peaceful it was very peaceful i mean there was a bit of drama sometimes like with the cleaning and stuff but yeah my 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 host experience was like completely different I, we wouldn't talk to each other um in the end i only made friends with like one of the people in my host mm -hmm. and like i'm really close to her hi but ellie i don't, hi, think, she ellie. I don't think she watches but, but hi hello. just in case <laughs> um and yeah it was really peaceful and like it was it was a nice experience yeah I feel like my experience is very very peculiar mm. so I shared my flat with four other people and it just so happens to be four Chinese guys mm. so they would not talk to me like never they would not I would say hi and they would just ignore me mm. and like obviously I don't want to like generalize or anything but these particular four Chinese guys were der tea mm. like you know right mm. you've been so i used my kitchen like the first month or two and then after that the kitchen was in such a state yeah basically on my first year of uni i couldn't even eat <laughs> i would i didn't cook at you all you bought yourself like a stove like yeah a, i had to like buy myself like a like a portable stove and i cooked in my room and keep in mind i was paying a lot of money to live there and i was living in like really shit conditions so mm. i realized after that like i could i am not someone who can just share their flats with mm. like unknown people yeah. and after that, for my second year, I just moved into the flat where I'm, I am now with my boyfriend, and that's not for me. Mm. Kind of touch on this, but mm. we're gonna talk about like the living ex expenses mm. in London. First year, of course, my we are Spanish, so we do get a loan for our mm. actual studies, but we don't get like a maintenance loan. Mm. So obviously, my parents had to pay for my accommodation, my transport, and everything. And after all of that, they gave me like £50 weekly. Maybe somewhere else in the UK, £50 weekly is a lot. Mm. But for me, after buying groceries, like £50 weekly meant that I could only go out once. Mm. And like to wasabi or like yeah. something like that. It really, I really couldn't go out a lot. And if I had like a crazy, crazy night out, yeah. I couldn't even like go out for the rest of the month. Yeah, the same way. Um, I'm one of those people who's always found a way to like make other people pay for them um, and that's like whenever I go out because whenever I when I came to uni I didn't really drink that much and so I would always like mention this can't relate <laughs> <laughs> I, I always would mention this to people and because I would be like oh I, don't, I really don't drink that much then people would be like let me yeah, buy you a yeah, drink yeah. and I'll be like, okay, so I... Entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you know, how you have to realize how to navigate yeah. stuff. Um, but yeah, definitely, like, when I when I, when I move, like, especially first year, I, I really wouldn't go to clubs that yeah. much because it was so expensive to me and, like, I really, I, I was, I was like, I prefer spending that money, like, going to a restaurant yeah. or, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it really depends what your priorities mm. are. A lot of people's priorities were like drinking and going out, but for us, we're a bit more sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> no, we would just rather like go out for a nice lunch mm. or like something. But for sure, everyone is kind of in the same situation. Everyone in first year is kind of broke. They're yeah. all getting like, like student unions are the best place yeah. if you want to get drunk. Like, yeah, honestly, drinks are cheap there and everything. But yeah. That goes on to the next topic. For me, mm. I got my my I got a job on at the end of first year, 
and like on it obviously it's it was amazing because i finally had like money to go out and everything but in the social aspect it was so seriously i think like it's the best thing i've done like throughout my whole uni mm. career is getting a i got a job at a, at a restaurant mm. and just like the fact that you could do so many things with the money you made there and also you make such good friends mm. with people because if you're working a shit job you bond with people over, over that how shit it is. you go for drinks to complain and it's honestly like it's such a good choice i would never regret it of course i worked so hard that summer mm. i would be working like more than 40 mm. hours a week but it was so good for my social life and because it gives you the opportunity to like be able to go out every single week every single day if you want it because you have that extra money and yeah you get to meet a lot of nice people that's how i met mm. my boyfriend and everything yeah. yeah but for me it was more like i i've just done like random bits and bobs gigs, and, and gigs whatever <laughs> i was a student ambassador well i technically i still am i was a student ambassador for during second third year and my master's now and then i've done like a couple internships but like it's not the same i don't feel yeah, like it's the same as, yeah um whether it's like a job or like a society i feel like it's so good because mm. you know you are never gonna have as much free time as you have when yeah. you're a student yeah so i feel like really investing your time into like clubs or societies or part-time jobs mm. or something you get to meet so many different people and you get to like experience different things yeah yeah with the social life thing mm. especially in first year you really need to like Mm. You really need to go out there. I thought I was like introverted until I started uni. I felt like I was an introvert mm. because, but it's different because when you're actually put in the situation, mm. I feel like I don't really mind talking to strangers or like, yeah. But I, I was really scared to do that at first. But then when you realize literally everyone yeah, is yeah. in the same position, yeah, yeah, definitely. Just put yourself out there because, like, literally everyone at least in my uni i think everyone was super friendly and yeah, like yeah. everyone was always like would never look down on you <laughs> they would they... never say like why are you talking like yeah that never like, happens cool. like even outside a seminar even like as far as third year you could just literally strike a strike a conversation exactly. with anyone and like no one would be like i've never had like no, a bad I've never experience, had that experience like that yeah yeah a bit of a diff different kind of situation because of our degrees mm. so my degrees media and communications is a very very practical degrees mm. so you need to specialize in like a practice which mm. i did like interactive media which is like coding and stuff like that so my course didn't have any exams which i love because mm. i don't know to be to be honest guys like exams don't mean anything it just tests how well you memorize stuff yeah so in my course, rather than exams, we would have like obviously coursework, and then for our practical subject, we would have like an like a like a project, end of year project, something mm. like that. But I had like a photography course, and like Guillermo was my model. We had so much fun doing that. We right? had so much. We had fun. so much fun doing that, and I never got like less than like a first in my practical courses because you enjoy it so mm. much. It doesn't feel like work. Mm. So yeah, that's honestly I feel like my my degree in the practical aspect was so good because mm. it was so much fun mm. yeah and for my degree like we had a very big mixture of like coursework and exams especially especially during first year um it was pretty much half and half like half exams half coursework but then as second year and third year came you could really pick because you could yeah you had so many elective modules that you could really pick like and avoid exams or avoid that much coursework if you really wanted it you say the workload for your one because for me as i said we had a lot of mm. practical thing so of course there's a lot of work you need to do like outside of class for the practicals i specialized in coding at the end like interactive media i spent like hour like hours a day towards the end like mm. just coding and stuff but to be honest I'd, I'd rather like spend that much time like actually creating something than like mm. doing reading for me it was like Obviously, it's English lit, um, and we were doing so much reading all the time. Like, like especially first year because it, it was like they really like drop you in and like they try to give you like a, modules from a, a very big time period. So we would get like maybe like two novels, three novels a week that you'd have to read, and obviously like people wouldn't. Look. AKA me. Um, Look. <laughs> 
and you have a lecture or a seminar there's like a set reading and then like a recommended reading you're meant to do and during first year i did all my set reading for before lectures and stuff and then you realize it's really pointless yeah like of course if you're actually interested in the reading or in the subject in the topic of the in the week, topic of the week mm. you could do the reading but yeah. Especially by third year, you you know exactly what yeah. reading you need to do. So like each week was a different topic. It might yeah. be different for it. Yeah, mine course. mine was same. Um, but because each week had like a different topic, I remember like I had this module during third year. Like each week we would have a novel, and each week would be like a a, a different theme, and it would be like so pointless. Like if you weren't interested to buy the book or just rent the book yeah. out from the library and just read like a three hundred page novel just to just to like forget about it the next week like obviously it's interesting but at the same time i felt like you just got the most out of the seminar even you even yeah. if you hadn't read it for my last term in the third in third year i only went like to like two or three mm. lectures per subject and you guys i got a first i graduated yeah. with a first so yeah i feel like most of your social life was kit, outside was of outside uni. of uni yeah. whereas for me like i I would often not do the reading and turn up to the classes. Yeah, I get because, that. Because because it was like because I was going with friends because most of most of the people I made friends with were from my course or like my uni and so it's it would be like a vibe just to go to like a cafe yeah, yeah. with my friends and then go to class even if I hadn't done any of the reading. Yeah, yeah, I, but, I get that. I did that in first mm -hmm. and second year, but then my best uni friend Bank Bank dropped I out. Know you. <laughs> He dropped out, so... And yeah, yeah, just in first year, I recommend go to every lecture, every seminar, just for the social aspect yeah. of it. And also to... You can't do what we did in yeah. the third year if you don't know how your uni works. You yeah, really yeah, need yeah. to get a grasp of how your, yeah, yeah, yeah. how your uni works, so... Definitely. And then the question is, like, the next question is further education, question mark. Which is what I've done. Yeah, obviously Guillermo says yes, because he's studying a master's mm. right now. Do you want to like say why you decided to study a master's? So, honestly, the first thing is that I really didn't want to start working straight away. And one of the one of the main things is I always wanted to do, like go into further study, because I, I just feel like I've always felt really young, especially since I came to uni. And I've always felt like I'm I still need to like grow myself out in like an academic point of view and yeah that was yeah. that was basically why mm. i started doing my, a master's for me i to be honest i would have loved to study a master's but the problem i had with my course media and communication is so wide mm. so i feel like you didn't really learn like a specific career mm. so for me i found out that digital marketing is what i like so because of that, I would love to like actually go into a master's yeah. to study that specific thing that I yeah. want. I'm rumbling on so much that my camera ran out of battery. What was I saying? Uh, oh, oh, that studying a master's is so expensive. And mm. to be honest, nowadays you can do everything online. Yeah. So for me, I would have loved to study a master's because, you know, I didn't want to go straight into work because now mm. I'm in that kind of life, 100% financially independent. And I feel like I'm too young for that. I'm only yeah. 21, but I'm already like, yeah, but yeah, I would have loved to study a master's. But at the same time, I don't feel like it was like sustainable and it was like worth yeah. it for me like money wise that was the video mm. if you guys have any further questions about uni life and something you, you want like more specific answers to mm, so maybe leave them down below maybe we will answer yeah them. also a lot of people have been asking q a with guillermo so yeah we if could that's something you want leave it down in the comments leave I'm just questions gonna, i'm gonna make him like a permanent guest <laughs> guest in the channel i'm gonna feed hey pilar feed guillermo <laughs> Thank God I don't get monetization of this channel at all. <laughs> no. I would totally have to pay a fee for here. Not yet. Not yet anyway. <laughs> so yeah guys, thank you for watching. Stay safe. Like the video. Follow. Subscribe. Notification bell. <laughs> <laughs> Follow Guillermo on Instagram. And yeah, see you guys soon. See you Bye. guys. Stay safe. We're a Bye. mask. We're a mask.